All right, let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. He's back in the bullpen today. We have none other than the former mayor of Ithaca, New York, Savante Merrick, the remarkable leader. Mr. Mayor, good day, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Richie. We really well, appreciate being here. Man, I appreciate you being here. You were the youngest mayor in New York State history. You were in Ithaca, New York, first black mayor after winning the seat on the Common Council. You were still a junior at Cornell University when you won that post. I have bragged about you <laughs> on this program many times while you were still mayor. And a lot of it had to do with your ability to lead that city and lead that council to a more progressive stance as it relates to policing and it was effective for your community. So let's talk about defunding the police or reforming police or replacing the police, whatever you want to term it as. There is some interesting work that has been done, studies that have concluded there's a way to actually figure out who's a bad cop in the beginning. Can we talk about that first? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I appreciate that because it is. And it is, I appreciate you having me on, on Halloween. This topic seemingly is like a zombie itself. It just yep. will not die. We'll be defunding the police, we'll be not defunding the police. And of course, the answer is like, we all want to stop police violence. And I see too many people who have just given up. They say, well, there's no way to stop this. It just keeps happening. We all marched. There's no way to prevent this. But of course, there is a way to prevent it. And the best way you can prevent it, it turns out, and study after study showing this in, in Ithaca, we started doing this six years ago, uh, is that the best thing you can do to stop police violence and get good officers patrolling the streets is to screen out the bad ones before you even hire them, right? It's not to train them after they're already on the force. It's to prevent them from even coming on the force. And you can do that if you do a psychological exam paired with a polygraph test. Right, So actually have a trained clinician, administer these for everybody that you want to hire. What you'll find is like what we did in Ithaca. Once we started doing this, we screened out 75% of people who would have otherwise been hired. What is that, what am I talking about? I'm talking about 75% of people who passed the physical, they passed the written exam, they passed the interview process. They were about to be hired and we sat them down with a doctor who interviewed them with the polygraph and said, why do you actually wanna be a cop? And the answers that floated to the surface were, I've always wanted to use my gun in a real life situation. Well, I was always bullied by those people and I wanna put them in their place. Well, I, I always wanted to show the people in that neighborhood who's in charge around here. And when those answers come up, you know you're dealing with an authoritarian or racist or both. And you can screen them out, making sure that the people on the beat are the ones who actually deserve to protect and serve. This is so fascinating. Um, in your role as executive director uh, for People for the American Way, you all deal with policy related items all the time. This is a policy dynamic. It did not require, however, federal legislation to enact. So you as mayor of Ithaca, New York, how did you convince members of your community, advocates and non advocates, and also members of council? How did you convince them this was a good way to figure out better policing in our city. Well, the, the, the beauty of this and you know, Dr. Richie, I think you just put your finger right on it, which is that if we're gonna wait for the federal government to solve the, the issues in American policing, we're gonna be waiting for a long, long, long time, right? Because Congress is Congress and because uh, they actually don't directly control these police departments. The beauty of some of these reforms and the reforms that we compiled uh, as part of People for the American Way, which I should say, by the way, our, our brand new uh, board member, our newest board member of People for the American Way is the terrific uh, Reverend Jamal Bryant, who yep. was just featured in your last segment. Uh, we put out this report that allows mayors to take action right away. Right? It's a compilation of policies and procedures, some of which require votes from your city council, some require some special funding, but most a mayor of good intentions can actually implement immediately, including this polygraph test and psychological review for officers before they join the force. So you can jump right in if you just go to peopleforthamericanway.org, look at our all safe report and see what in that report could your mayor be doing 
right now to keep your community safer. For those who may be wondering, um, the US Supreme Court, they have upheld that officers can be mandated to take polygraph examinations prior to employment and during employment. Um, ben Jealous, mutual friend of both of ours. I had a conversation with him, this was months back, but he was talking about the same issue of aggression. And he made a noteworthy conclusion based on the data. He said, listen, if you have a person, and I'm paraphrasing our dear brother. But he said, if you have a person that has an aggression factor of let's say nine on a scale of one to 10, but they have a racism factor of let's say four, that person will likely be a problem as a cop. If you have it the other way around, where they have a racism index of nine on a scale of one to 10, but they have a very low aggression standard, you may not actually get to a problematic issue with that person. It's and, and then when they align up together, when they align together, nine for racism, nine for um, violence or aggression, you got a serious problem on your hands. Break down some of that data and how that science correlates into a better policy. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. You know, the I mean, we should just be very honest, and this is a conversation that happens in the black community all the time too. We want to eliminate racism, right? Yes. But we have very little control what's actually happening in your hearts and in your minds. What we do want to control is what happens, uh, what you do with your body to our body. Right? And if you walk around in your head and you have all sorts, that's fine. But when it comes time to hire, to allow people into college, to not shoot people for no reason in the street, uh, what we don't want to see is that implicit biases making the leap to action. And so it turns out, that the officers who have the highest scores for aggression and authoritarianism are the ones who are most likely to shoot and kill somebody. This, this last segment that you actually just did about that black officer uh, down at Atlanta who killed that young black teen because he stole his car. I think if you unpacked that, you would not find necessarily an implicit bias that he thought, okay, he's a black teen, I need to kill him. I think you'd find that maybe he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed that it was his car being stolen, that he didn't want to lose face in front of his own department. And so often, uh, the last thing that a a person who's killed by the police officer does is insult the manliness of that officer. Mm. Either by calling them a word, speaking down to them, or or not complying. I don't mean like not complying with an official order, but not being compliant to them. Mm-hmm. And so when you do these psychological exams, you can screen out people who score high on certain questions like, when I walk into a room, everyone needs to be silent. When I make a suggestion, everyone must accept it. I am going to become a police officer so that people finally have to listen to what I have to say. When people score very highly on those test questions, no matter what their implicit views on race, you should be very, very wary of hiring them into your force because they're the ones who are most likely to commit violence. Let's talk about the actionable data you were able to curate because of the program. You stated that roughly 75% of individuals you all turned away. They passed the physical exam, they otherwise qualified to be police officers. 75% you turned away because they failed the psychological evaluation. That means, dear brother, I'm making the science congruent. That means that well over half of individuals that typically will apply to be a cop may not be mentally fit to do so. Explain that, unpack that for us. Well, uh, you know, I can only say I can only say so far, though we are starting to track nationwide. I can only say so far okay. that those were the numbers in Ithaca. What I can also tell you is that uh, any mayor at all of our cities, wherever you live, whoever's in charge of your municipal government is probably settling a lawsuit or two right now. Either from a police officer that's suing the municipality, from somebody who's suing that police officer. Millions of dollars are spent every year. Nationwide, it's hundreds of millions of dollars selling these lawsuits. I can tell you that after we instituted this test, none of those lawsuits came from our officers who had passed the test. All of those uh, lawsuits Mm. came from officers we hired before we had the test implemented. Uh, That's just a fact. 100% of the people that passed the test gave you 0% of problems on the force. That's exactly right. It dropped. It is, the, it is better, it is more mm. efficient than training officers to do a good job. 
better than training in de-escalation. It's certainly better than hoping officers do a good job. Just like in any field, if you can hire people with the right set of attitudes, beliefs, postures, if you can hire third grade teachers who can control a room with their voice and their, their body language, if you can hire people who are respected on the street uh, in the first place, then you can prevent violence down the road. Mr. Mayor, always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for your thoughtfulness and your advocacy. You're making a difference in this world. Tell people how they can follow you, check out your work. You can check me out at, at Savante Myrick, uh, which is spelled the usual way. Hopefully they have it in the Cairo. And, uh, and check us out at People for the American Way. We're fighting for truth, justice, and the American way every single day. Always a pleasure, dear brother. Look to have you back on the show very soon. Thanks.